Also, I know it's a little messy. I just hopped off this after I smashed my finger for the last time. Who in their right mind looks at a 7.3 power stroke and just goes, wow, that is everything I want. It's perfect. Down to the last detail, the last fuel leak, oil leak, destroyed manifolds, leaking oil cooler, clattery, crappy turbos, terrible transmission. Like who, who looks at one of these and is like, yep, I'll have that one. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are working on the Mega Cab again. Really interesting to read all your guys' comments on the Duramax video, but you know, oh well. I said what I said, I'll stand behind it. So what we are working on now is everything you need to essentially install a full manual valve body in your, I guess really any 48RE depending on which truck you have the brackets and stuff are different but for the most part it is all very similar so what we have here is our line pressure gauge i know a lot of people are always interested in that so what i buy is a focus here there we go a stainless steel zero to 300 psi gauge it is quarter inch uh pipe thread then i buy steel not brass steel couplers and uh if you look uh, if you're ever confused the brass ones are only good to 200 psi and these steel ones are good to like i think over a thousand so you want to use steel fittings on line pressure gauges especially if they're permanent so we have this so this will get us quarter to quarter from there we will do quarter to dash 4 an just like this here and then we have our uh dash four to eighth inch national pipe thread which is going to allow us to install the line pressure gauge on our accumulator port and then we have our uh, turbo oil feed it's basically a ptfe hose here i get the five foot chunk um i think f five foot's about the minimum you need uh, depending on where you want to mount it on ours we will be mounting it uh, just like the 07s where it's kind of at the base of the shifter um, this video will span a few days so if I change clothes or sound different like just bear with me here but basically what will happen oh my goodness how, where, how did I get in there uh, we will build our shifter bracket off of the two um, if you look, you see that metal bracket right there. Uh, basically, our bracket will come off of these legs here. Come up, the shifter will be about here. Well, my line pressure gauge will be down here, just like in the 07. Um, so that is where it will go, which is why it doesn't need to be super long. Um, and I actually, for, for my trucks, what I do is I run the three wires up and I draw a hole in the floor uh, for the line pressure gauge and the switches and then I draw a hole through the firewall this way and then wrap the shifter linkage back around there now uh, if you are new to the full manual uh, I highly recommend this little kit here this is a one two four four five bk it's a rostra uh 46 47 48 and i think a 44 re pigtail um what this allows us to do essentially is make a new harness for our uh switches so you're only going to use three wires you're going to send 12 volts to it um, key on power and then you're gonna send a ground circuit for lockup and overdrive this allows us to make a new harness and not cut our factory harness in case we ever want to go back but there you go there and then our shifter is not here but we're gonna run the same as always our bnm gated shifter uh, and then 
Meyer had an extra set of these switches laying around. These are um, now made by Gray's Performance. And uh, I don't know what's been going on with him lately, but some kind of back order. Can't get parts. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, we lucked out and Meyer had an extra set. So these will be our lockup and overdrive switches, just like the 07. So we will have this button here be lock up, this button here be overdrive, and essentially both trucks will be set up identical. I'm gonna get you guys set up. We'll get this harness made, and then I will show you guys what it looks like when it's done. We'll get our line pressure gauge kind of set up, and then I'll show you guys where I drill the hole. Okay, so here's our completed harness. Uh, used a little bit of shrink tube to crimp that side on, and then Make sure you label your wires. Again, you'll have overdrive, lockup, and 12 volt power. 12 volt power is pin one on here. Your lockup is pin seven, and overdrive is pin six. If you look, there's actually numbers here. Kind of hard to read, but uh, they'll have numbers there. They'll also have numbers on the back side. Um, and then we have our line pressure gauge, just a little Loctite 545. I should say it is not recommended to run a mechanical line pressure gauge in the cab of your truck, but I have yet to find an electronic sending unit one not suck. So this is where we're at. And there is the location of our hole right here. So really nice access. Line pressure gauge will just go over. The electronic harness will come over to probably that eyelet right there and then drop down. Should be pretty simple actually. And then uh, from there, I uh, run the harness up, line pressure gauge down. I'll get it installed and show you guys what it looks like. And here we are. Dipstick, that's your second gear servo. This one right here, accumulator port. That's where you wanna read line pressure. So I'm gonna get that plug pulled out, put our adapter in. And there we go. Uh, I usually pitch it forward like that, uh, just helps make the swoop backwards easier on it. So now we will get the harness clicked in and secured down here and then start pulling all the slack up in the cab. And inside the truck, we have our line pressure gauge right here and our wiring harness right here for the shifter. Um, obviously the shifter is not here yet still, but it's all laid in here. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and fill the trans. Already filled the T-case. Um, let's get this filled up here and let's see what kind of see what kind of line pressure we got in this old girl here. One in the converter, three quarts plus two bottles. So we got 12 in. We're gonna start this thing for eight seconds, shut it off, and at least dump four more in. And the reason that we put 12 in right away uh and not just straight to let's say 20 something like that is you'll actually overfill this thing and it'll start puking all over the floor um so you put 12 in you turn the truck on and that allows the pump to basically pull some out of the pan and then you're able to finish filling um i'm gonna go ahead and put uh four in so that'll put us to 16 and then I'm gonna put two more in. We'll put it to 18. Um, just from experience, I know that's enough for a deep pan to, uh, with a filter extension, to not cavitate, uh, cycle through the gears, and then start doing our uh, dipstick measuring. All right, guys, moment the truth. Oh, Meyer needs to settle down a little bit. My God. Jesus, that's an idol. That's a long. So that's, here's first, second, drive, neutral. So now I get to go check the fluid. Line pressure gauge, good to go. Uh, wiring, done. Hopefully that helped you guys again. Pin one, 12 volts, pin seven, overdrive, pin six is lock up. Um, I'll try to post a picture of that diagram up here for y'all. Um, and now we're just waiting on the shifter. Once we get the shifter, we can make the bracket 
And then after that, guys, it's pretty much a wrap on a full manual valve body. You do not have to permanently install a line pressure gauge, but I feel like for a majority of the time with a truck that's full manual valve body, it's more of a toy. Um, and having a line pressure gauge just allows you to see problems before they become big problems. So the biggest thing about a line pressure gauge is if you see the line pressure start to go down a little bit, um, two things are happening, or I guess it could be three. Like you might be low on fluid, but that usually is more erratic. Um, you could have the fluid getting hotter, which like anything, the viscosity starts to get lower, the pressure gets a little bit lower. Um, so like on a hot trans, you know, you might lose 5, 10 PSI. Uh, the second thing is your filter could be getting plugged from debris um, and you can catch that before it becomes so plugged that it destroys the trans, like especially on break-in, uh, drag racing, sled pulling, you know, heavy uh, street use, like hard street use. Um, you're gonna get clutches that shed, bands that shed, um, converter clutch, all that stuff. Like there is gonna be stuff that wears in there and that line pressure gauge gives you a quick eyeball on it and uh, you're able to uh, make sure you know that your trans has the right line pressure. It's it's very similar to oil pressure A lot of people run oil pressure gauges on their vehicles. It's the same concept You could spot problems before they become very big problems. We are back for another installment Of the full manual valve body. Uh, we have our B&M shifter here Right there and then I always see people struggle with this. So maybe maybe this will help somebody All right on your 47 48 trucks you're going to use this bracket this one right here and then you're going to use this one this uh shift linkage bracket here this is what's going to bolt to your tranny and all the rest of these you can just keep throw away whatever and then here's our cable now if you look the uh this end of the cable much bigger because it has this standoff built in it for the uh, shifter itself so all you have to do is drill a hole and the nice part about all this is you can actually take this whole thing apart here uh, like that a little easier to do one handed or two handed take that off and then you come over here take that off and then you take your two jam nuts off like so and that allows you to only have to put about a half inch hole through your firewall for the shifter um all it's got to do is fit this through now so that's one nice part about these cables um we are doing a uh, forward exit so the cable is going to come out the front side right there and then it will wrap around and then come into the trans this way forward entry so um, five foot cable is plenty for that. Uh, now, to get the shifter buttons installed on this, the hardest part is breaking free the bolts on the side. I find a T8 uh, Torx bit is your best bet to get these loose. I already broke them free. I got lucky. These ones didn't fight me too, too much. I have had some that you're just like, oh my God, like, why won't this come out? Um, so now we can mount our buttons on the shifter. All right, as I was saying, there are several ways to route the wire. You can route it down through here, come out um, through the bottom. There's a channel right here. And then you can run the wires out and down. Um, I believe the wires are designed to go, let's see, they come through there, come out the back. And then I think you're supposed to drop them through one of these holes here. Uh, which works fine, like there's nothing wrong with that. Personally, I choose a different route and I actually usually route my wires on the outside and then they kind of sit over here. Um, I, it's easier to fix them if they need fixing um, and it just is an easier install. Not as clean, I'll give you that, but uh, much easier to service in my opinion. So Okay, so here's kind of what the shifter looks like. Um, just tuck the wires through, got the WPE brackets on both sides. And like I said, I'll anchor the wire right here and then I run mine on the outside. Um, again, you can do it through the inside. It does look nicer, but um, I don't know, just for 
ease of service, I suppose, I actually run mine on the outside. So it'll kind of look like this. Um, and yeah, we got our bracket made up now, at least the bottom part. And then all I do from here is I will weld a rod to the bottom of this and then weld that to the angle iron and there she be. Okay, so this is obviously not the same seat in the truck, but this is a third gen bench seat. What we do basically is do this. We're going to straddle these two bolts and basically the driver and passenger side seat have these brackets that come up that this center seat bolts to here. And what this allows us to do is drill our holes into this plate and sandwich it between there with that nut. So obviously a lot easier when you have a seat just sitting here, but nonetheless, this is how I get my holes. This is what we ended up with, all right? I could not run the normal bracket that goes here because I have factory lines. So um, just something to think about. If you do have factory lines, you cannot run this bracket. You can run this bracket with non-factory lines. It's just the factory lines are in the way. So I audibled. Um, this is one of Logan Built's stainless shifter cable brackets. Now. I have bought several of these. I like them. However, I still think that they're a pain in the absolute butthole. Logan, if you watch this, weld the nut or the bolt to the bracket. So you, all you have to do is just tighten it up here. It is so hard to hold all this together, which is why we didn't get it on film. So the cable you guys can see there comes through the firewall here. It'll be a lot better when the heat exchanger is out of the way. But for right now, that's it. We used the L-shaped bracket I showed you guys. And then here's our linkage coming in. Tighten these. And then we are in technically right now third gear. But when you adjust this, guys, it's very easy. Put the shifter up there in second gear. Put this in second. First is all the way forward. Second, third, neutral, reverse, park is all the way that way. Put this in second. Put that in second. Drop it in should make it drop effortlessly in. Then you're gonna click the shifter to first, come down here, it should fall in pretty easy. You're gonna click the shifter up there in the third, come down here, engage third detent. So again, one, two, three. It should be able to go in and out fairly easy. That's all you do. 
neutral reverse those ones are a little they fight you a little bit park is very hard to get this linkage in and out that is normal the thought process is you want one two and three detents to always be engaged correctly it's not a perfect engagement in park it can be a lot better if you adjust this in neutral park will be better but then first starts to have an issue so you want your forward gears the gears you're in all the time to be perfect which is why you adjust this in second now you guys could see our harness here i will put some plastic over these um, so they don't get water in them and then i will zip tie our stock cable probably like somewhere up here and we're done so i'm gonna clean this up down here and then I will take you guys inside the truck, show you the finished bracket. You guys kind of saw me weld it. Uh, not my best work. We had a stainless mounting plate, galvanized heavy wall conduit for the upright uh, with some mild steel I got at Lowe's for the seat part. So not ideal. Busted out the old, the old spray and prayer. Got her done. Got it painted. It's now in the truck. Let me show you guys once I get cleaned up. You guys can see the cable goes through right there i actually didn't want to trim the carpet on this one i leave it like that uh, i just feel like it looks better um in case i ever want to go back uh to not have to deal with the carpet and then oh yeah i better trailer brake controller temporary setup there oh my goodness guys I'm getting a little getting a little nervous on camera it happens happens still all right, and then I start with a half inch drill bit, and then I take a five eighths in there. Sometimes you need a little bit more to wiggle. It stays pretty tight with the rubber uh, insulation. So here we go. Um, if you guys are curious, this is the exact same position as the 07. So exact same placement as the 07, same height, same everything. I measured it. So here we have first, second, third, so again, first, second, can't go, grab it, third, neutral, you hit your reverse lockout, reverse, park. And then I take you guys over here to our column here. Big thanks to, oh my goodness, big thanks to the OG. Y'all already know, if you don't, you do now. This is a full manual valve body truck that has full command and fuel and the park reverse neutral drive work. So we're in second, third, neutral sometimes doesn't always work on the uh, rooster comb with a 48 and then check this out. Ooh, we got reverse lights with a full manual valve body. Mm, I love it. And then there's park again. First, second, third, neutral. Now from here, what we will do is uh, put our shield over this. Um, basically, we will have the black shield over it. And then we'll run our wires back in the shifter. Now that I'm done welding on it and everything. <clears throat> and then here is our finished bracket. Might be hard for you guys to kind of see, but it's just basically a straight piece of pipe down to this bracket um all i do is i welded a foot on the bottom of this cape uh, bottom of this pipe that allows it when i push really hard it actually hits the floor adds a little bit of stability um and then unlike my 07 i move this just enough where if you move the seats you can actually get in here so i cheated it forward a little bit not ideal, but a lot better than my 07, which cannot actually get in there. Um, so that's where we're at. I'm going to get all the wires hooked up. Uh, we have our wires right here through the floor. Line pressure gauge. Our shifter mounted. It's indicating correctly. We are 12 volts of ground and two wires away from having a running driving truck also guys i apologize this video is not so much of uh, me explaining time lapses stuff like that it's very hard to get cameras inside trucks and make the video look right um, i don't really have a good solution for that um, it's also very hard because the whole time i'm just 
fight and stuff. Uh, I am not a small guy. I am six foot two. Um, I'm well over 200 pounds and trying to fight all of this stuff and do the camera and everything else is very hard. And even down below, like I don't have anybody here to hold the camera. I'm constantly moving. I didn't have a good angle to show you guys. So I promise I'm not trying to cut corners or cut you out of it, but um, it is all pretty simple stuff. Uh, again, you need a piece of plate, two inches by about six inches. Uh, my shifter is 11 inches from the floor up. And then um, it is 14 inches of two inch angle iron to grab the bottom of the seat. This only works on the bench style. If you have the business console, you will have to do something different. Um, but again, this is how we're making it work in my truck. Uh, the only other piece I took apart was I did take this out of the way and that was just so I could tighten the bolts. Um, those two bolts that I talked about uh, that I showed you on the other seat. And I mean, this thing, like it's, it's solid. It's not going anywhere. I did add this little gusset here, right there. Um, I do that so the plate can't flex. And then on the bottom, I actually don't gusset it. I've just gotten again where that foot is and it kind of creates like a fulcrum where it can't go any further forward but i'm really happy uh we have good uh leg room here against the shifter uh we have a very comfortable shifter with the armrest down which was very important like i can actuate all the gears now if we do ever do compete or anything like that i always move this armrest back um and then it just makes it easier, you know, with this not in the way, but for most of the time when I'm driving, this down is no issue at all. Um, now we have to wire. So it's very simple on these shifters. Uh, realistically, if you get one that doesn't light up, uh, you won't have as many wires. So if you get one that doesn't light up, you'll basically have two wires, um, or actually, sorry, three wires. You'll have your ground, and then your two ground outputs for each of these switches. Because this is a lit shifter, being that these two buttons here light up, uh, we have a fourth wire. So what we're going to do is we have to intercept, all right? <clears throat> Over here, you guys remember, we have our 12 volt key on power and a good ground here. Uh, that's what we're using for our gauges. So all we're gonna do is run two wires from here and then we go across the dash and then we'll go under here and pop up right about here, right where the other wires are at, okay? And then in this harness, it's quite simple. We have three wires in here. We need 12 volt key on power and then a signal for lockup and a signal for overdrive. Here we have a ground, or sorry, signal for lockup, signal for overdrive, 12 volt key on for this and a ground. So that's all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run those wires over um, and then we'll hook it up. And then after this guys, we are ready for our test drive. Um, being that it is wiring and everything inside the cab, I'm gonna just knock this out and then I will show you guys what it looks like when I'm done. Um, this is the first time I've used the loom included with the shifters. Um, I kind of like it. it looks a little bit nicer than like split loom. So, uh, we'll probably take it to here and then run split loom from there. And basically my shifter wire sits right there. I've never had an issue with it, like rubbing through. So for right now, we're going to let it be. I'm going to get to wiring. I'll check back with you guys as soon as I'm done. Okay. So we have our shifter. Um, this is how I route my wire. As if I anchor it down here, got our line pressure anchored. Um, harness just kind of runs down here. I take the extra and I push it in between the seats. And now we have the shifter. If you look, I did check it. This is our lockup. Overdrive, you guys see the lights there. So now all that's left is test drive it. We'll do that in the morning tomorrow. Um, and we'll wrap this video up and this is it from the other side. So, um, I don't try to make the line pressure super in the way, but you can see it quickly at a glance. Uh, and then again, I'll show you guys the lights here. So this is my lockup overdrive. It's the same way as the black truck. 
and I'm happy with it. Let's uh, get a good night's sleep and uh, fire this puppy up and take her on her maiden voyage. It is the morning of, we got a fresh, let me put my seatbelt on. <clears throat> got fresh, fresh tunage. Look at that. No check engine lights, full manual valve body. It's a, it's a good day. <clears throat> uh, very low on fuel. We do have the Parker Roos neutral drive indicator. So currently I'm in first gear. Gonna come up to a stop. I guess let's find out if Meyer left this thing locking up in first. He did not, that's good. <clears throat> so we're in first. Truck is a little cold still. We're gonna grab second. Oh, so smooth. We have about 180 PSI of line pressure. Hit lockup. Lockup's nice and gentle. It's pretty good. I was honestly nervous when I did the line pressure test. I actually texted Meyer and I said, gosh dang, she gave me a race valve body. Cause that's a lot of pressure. I mean, this thing makes in idle with no TV, 140 PSI. Now I do have a tune on here that is allowing us to use the TTVA, but because there's so much baseline pressure, <clears throat> I don't think we'll actually need it. But we're in lockup now, second gear locked. Now I'm gonna grab third gear. There's third, locked. And it is gonna be slow to lock on this uh, setup under low throttle, which is fine. Um, but man, this, this thing is smooth. I thought for sure with a full manual, it was gonna be jerky like my 07. Granted, we don't run near as much line pressure as my 07, but still. Put, it, put the old girl in first here. So we got first gear. Second gear, no overlap. Lock up. We'll do a 2-3 lock shift. Oh, man, that is money. We'll check overdrive, but to do that, I'm gonna turn the converter off. We got overdrive, good line pressure and overdrive. Mm, it did not like that with the lockup. It was a little low on the RPM, but guys, this thing freaking rocks. Love it. So far, this is exactly how you want a test drive to go. You're not going to run that red light. And there you guys can see, came up to a light right when I started applying the brakes. You pop this in neutral, shows neutral there. I will say <clears throat> it is nice to have this here. Um, I'm not sure how many tuners can do that. I know a lot say that it's just like it goes away. They flash the truck as the G56 basically. Um, the guy that showed me uh you know he's just real good at it so yeah i'm excited again this is neutral pull it all the way back for first bump it for second grab the gate for third and then you could pop it into neutral and uh yeah not too bad all right light turn green first gear I gotta be careful on these lights. They're so close together. This one doesn't turn green until you're like on it. All right, we're in second. Hit lock up. Little turbo surge. That's always good for it. Locked two, three. Wow, these lock shifts, guys, are buttery. If you've ever seen videos of me shift my 07, it like jerks the camera around. This is very nice for like a street tow truck kind of build. And again, this, this gives us the opportunity to select our own gears. I'm not sure how I'm gonna like this towing. I've only towed a couple times with a full manual. Um, my main thought behind all of this was, this is a truck I don't drive all the time. I really only drive it on trips and stuff. So it shouldn't get old. I've daily driven full manuals. They're a lot of fun. I don't know on a truck with this low horsepower, how good of a time it'll be. But I could tell you for like a bigger setup, like they make trucks fun to drive. 
like just shifting the gears without a clutch, actually aiding, actually able to hold horsepower, unlike your G56. Like this is this is definitely it. But I'm gonna go get my hair cut and uh, check back with you guys on the ride home. All right, boys, we got a fresh, fresh haircut, and we're driving home. We had to get a little fuel, pretty low. Dang, uh, I don't know how many of you guys have American Express, but normally with our business card, the pump never cuts off. T today it was said $85, so I'm gonna have to give Dave a little hell, make sure he paid our bills. But um, yeah, we're in third gear unlocked. Gonna go ahead and lock the converter. Um, and now you guys can see when I give it throttle, RPM and mile an hour go up together. And uh, hi, look, there's Brandon. All right, so then we're gonna go up this hill here. So I'm coming, slowing down. I'm gonna go down to second, but not first. And then give it some throttle. Once I hit 25 Molnair, I hit lockup. Once I get around 30, 35, I will grab third and locked, especially with a stock turbocharger. Like this thing, you know, obviously spools way low. Uh, so, I mean, you can lug a stock turbo or even like a small set of compounds down pretty good um, cause they actually, you know, make power down there versus you guys have always watched me drive my 07 that, you know, although it is drivable, I do drive it much differently. I, I run the RPM a lot higher, but uh, part of the reason why, like right now we're in third, grab second, lock up, oof, nice and crispy. Little two three lock shift. Oof. That HE 351 is just living its best life. But uh, yeah, uh, it'll be an adjustment for sure driving a full manual at such a lower power level. But you guys thought I'd leave you hanging here? Rested on me there. I was not expecting that much kick. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. We have successfully installed our transmission. Uh, we put our full manual valve body in. I went over how to install it on the shifter. Uh, we went over how to wire it. And then just a quick synapse of how I'm shifting it. Uh, so far, no leaks. We're only about 10 miles in. But usually by now, if we would have messed up the flex plate, squareness you guys saw in the the video i installed it how i had that dial indicator if you don't do that step like usually in the first couple miles it'll start to leak out the inspection cover um that means you messed that up but hopefully you guys learned something give this one a big thumbs up drop a comment down below on uh, what you think we're gonna do for turbo setups on this i'll be honest bd has either lost interest lack of communication but we're gonna go a different route um, so as always guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch y'all on the next one.